Hello and welcome to 9 Months, India's first and only comprehensive show on pregnancy and parenting. Now, a new parent faces many challenges and we try to do our best. We prioritize the safety and well-being of our child. We do many things like watching the feeding and sleeping patterns, baby-proofing our house as we were just talking about. But there are very, very small things that we are sometimes not aware of. For example, as a new mother, I was cooped up in the home and in the room particularly for almost six months. And this can lead to feelings of isolation, of sometimes postpartum depression, of loneliness as well. And this is something we don't oftentimes talk about. How can you get out of it? There are very, very simple tips and tricks that you can use, especially with the use of color psychology. Here to talk to us about this particular topic, we have noted psychotherapist Arya Punjtimlo. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having me here today, Meghna. And of course, uh, Gina, thank you so much. You're also a new mother with two beautiful twins. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So let me begin, Arya, by asking you what exactly color psychology is. Well, Meghna, as the name suggests, color psychology uh, is a study of colors and how it impacts us on a psychological, emotional, as well as physical or physiological level. Okay. Now, intuitively, we all know which colors we like to wear, which makes you know which perks up our mood, which actually makes us feel more serious, um, and which colors we want to be surrounded by, which yeah. we're comfortable, which you know have a repulsive effect on us. Uh, what we don't know is that physiologically, a color also has an impact upon how we're feeling. Okay. Now, the rationale behind that is that light or color basically um, can very much influence the hypothalamus, which is a part of the brain which influences our respiration our heart rate as well as our nerve centers. So for example, the color red, if we see it, whether we're wearing it or we're surrounded by red, can tend to bring up, it does tend to bring up our blood pressure. It raises our respiration, so which is really great when we want to be motivated to go do something. It's a very different thing though if you want to try to sleep. So it's not, not many people have red in their bedrooms because it's very hard to relax with the color red surrounding you. Since the show is about motherhood, what impacts uh, do colors have on new mothers in particular? That is a very good question and it's something that is not very often thought about. Yeah. Now, as it is, mothers are quite vulnerable. You know, there's so many physical, hormonal changes going on within all of us. Yeah. And so much of our priority is our child that we don't think about nurturing ourselves. And this is a very simple thing that we can do. Very often, you know, if we're not feeling good about ourselves, we might wear a certain color and it perks us up. Yes, yes. So in any way, a mother, we're so much more sensitive because uh, so many changes are going within us. Yeah. So using color is a simple tip and trick, as you said, which can help uh, elevate our moods or sometimes even calm us down because sometimes we are feeling overstimulated, you know, we're feeling yeah. the cr baby's crying, how do we're I so calm down? we so right? All our senses yes. are so overstimulated. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes colors like blues and greens can help relax us. Blue, for example, can help to lower our blood pressure. Okay. Green can help also lower our heart rate so that we can also, and pinks also, shades of pink also help us to lower our heart rate so that we can calm down because obviously we can also need to calm down as much as our babies do. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and talking about babies and, you know, um, what impact does color have on them? Because that's not something we often think about, do we? Let's be very honest. As mothers, we tend to decorate, decorate the baby's room based on the colors that we like. And in fact, back in the, you know, in the 80s and 90s, a lot of, a lot of people talked about pastel colors being very nice for children. And of course, we have the stereotypical blue and green. But as we know now, we are living in a very general, neutral society. Pink is actually a good color for boys because it helps to calm them down a bit. Studies oh, okay. have actually been done and show that, you know, having pink around a boy can help them to calm down, especially if they're very energetic and hyper. What color do you recommend then, you know, the baby's uh, nursery to be painted in? Uh, or even the mother's room where the baby spends a lot of time? Anyway, the baby will not be able to see properly clear uh, colors until the first five months. Okay. So it ends up being a lot about what the parents uh, like. And I think it's very nice to try to have the different color, a whole color spectrum, as we can see the beautiful colorful wheel. Why do, we ch why do children and infants love, you know, bright uh, colors or like the nice, like, like rainbows or, you know, something with the whole spectrum? Because it's stimulating for them. So we're attracted to like warm colors immediately, right? Warm colors. Uh, again, every color, there's a balance in it. If a child is already very hyper and energetic, warm colors such as the yellow, orange, red tend to overstimulate them. Okay, okay. Yes, so sometimes yeah. children are too boisterous and energetic. It's nice to have the other shades, yeah. which are the, the greens and blues and pinks. Okay. Because it tends to calm yeah, one the down. Baby down. And if the yes. baby is slightly lethargic, then you can use colors like red yes. and orange to stimulate Very them or much. make them more energetic and active yes. and refreshed. Yes. Okay. That's but if good we're looking know. at the color scheme of the baby in nursery, it's nice yeah. to have. Uh, 
nice to have uh, accents of red. For example, you don't want to have a bright red wall because it's very hard for a baby to sleep because yeah. they get too stimulated with the red. Yeah. Whereas if you have uh, more e oranges and yellows, it helps a child. Okay, that's good to know. So, Jinal, what about you? Like uh, when, when you know, you, you're a new mother, you have uh, two uh, very beautiful children, 16-month-old twins. Uh, what did you do to when you were like sort of looking at painting your house and the nursery or your own room? When I was at my mom's house, my in-laws uh, went to I stay with them. Uh, they had coloured the house, but it was honestly not thought up on like yeah, this, yeah. the way she just because mentioned. Because I think we don't know these things also, yes, right? We're not aware of Actually, people, I fact. mean, mothers are more aware of the comfort of the sleeping things, uh, yeah. what do feeding. they need to wear, yeah, yeah, the feeding part and everything. Yeah. But yes, uh, the room colour and all that never comes uh, to the minds. You know, even as a, uh, as, as a procedure of baby proofing, because this episode has been about baby proofing, uh, people don't really think about the colours at all. So it doesn't enter new parents' minds because True. there's no awareness of it like yes. I never knew that uh, colors like warm colors or light colors or greens yellows have such a big impact on a child's mood on the development on their psychological makeup and of course even on a mother because as you said we're so vulnerable at that time yes. so we need something uplifting you know so many yes. mothers suffer from postpartum depression also very much Meghna and yeah. it's unfortunately not talked about enough but I mean yeah. many many mothers go through it exactly. and I think mothers yeah. particularly going through postpartum depression it's a very natural thing that can happen but the warmer colors like I said the yellows the oranges and reds are very good colors to help perk them up yeah that's good to know but what about, you know, as a new mother, um, you know, our priority is always the safety of our children. Yes. So a lot of us are afraid of certain kinds of pains because they have a reputation of, of uh, being toxic, yes. uh, of being carcinogenic also. Uh, how do you select the right kind of paint, you know, which is sort of free of chemicals, eco-friendly and all of that? It is a very good question as well. And it is very important to look at uh, zero or low VOC. Now, VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compounds. Okay. Concerning about this is that uh, chemicals which are high in uh, high VOC uh, tend to have a short-term and long-term um, detrimental effect. Okay. It's said that it can even lead to like, you know, carcinogenic effects, cancer-causing okay. effects. And that's not something that, I mean, we're so busy with so many other things that yeah. we, doesn't, we don't even we don't research focus on this. Because yes. we don't know it again. And much more awareness should be brought into, uh, you know, attention of mothers and fathers or families planning. Especially because, you know, children are, they're so vulnerable. Yes. Uh, their their respiratory body's still developing. developing. Yeah, their, their respiratory tracts are still developing. So for them to be exposed to chemicals and carcinogens is, uh, is definitely detrimental to their health. And also looking at low smell emulsions yeah. is very important because you think about it, even we can get very sensitive, our noses, when, we, when yeah. the, uh, the smell of fresh paint. Of and course. if they don't have the low uh, smell emulsions, it can be very, very harmful to the baby and have a long-term effect upon them as well. The last thing they need is anything that can be more harmful to them. And sometimes the fumes last for even like you were mentioning, like over a year also? Yes, so the short-term and long-term effects of the... Okay. Chemicals. So you should pick like ultra low odor uh, paints and ultra low uh, VOCs as you mentioned. Yes. Okay. Yes. So those are I think uh, very important uh, key points to, to keep in mind for any new mother and father. Can you take us through like different colors and palettes and uh, what is the impact of different colors like say pink or red or I don't know yellows and greens? Sure, we can start with the warm colors that we were talking about, the red, orange, yellow spectrum. Okay. Now, red uh, is a color that I mentioned that increases your respiration heart rate. Okay. So that's very helpful in a situation where you want to get things done, move into action. Uh, if you're feeling very tired as a mother, sometimes you feel like wearing red lipstick or wearing red color or because it wants to elevate our energies. Yeah. That's not very helpful on a child, however, which is very hyper. You don't want oh, to have them in a red room. You want to stimulate them. Yes. Yeah. Now, orange is a color uh, which is uh, very helpful in many levels. It uh, helps in terms of social interaction. Okay. It also enhances communication. Okay. It is also very good for learning. So a lot of educational uh, institutions use the color orange because it helps to, for critical thinking okay. as well as concentration. So maybe when your child is a little older and in the school and studying age, you can have a little bit of orange in the room. Oh, that's a Orange and green tip. are actually are very helpful because even green helps to promote uh, yeah, critical learning. thinking, concentration, memory. Yeah. Uh, green is also one of the cooler shades yeah. that we look at on okay. this, this side of the spectrum. Yeah. So it is a very, uh, if we look at nature for example, why do we all love going to, you know, going to forests and being surrounded by trees? Because it innately relaxes us. Exactly. So it is yeah. a very naturally therapeutic color, it calms us down, it, it, it creates a tranquil environment. So Especially in a place like Mumbai, right, where we exactly. don't even have access to public spaces like parks. 
for our children that we also just yes. talking about. Why are children so happy in parks and gardens? Because the colors are so soothing. The blues and greens, the cooler shades of the color spectrum are much more, help us to relax. And we have a very hectic lifestyle in Bombay, right? Yeah. So it is very helpful for children who are stimulated. Exactly. Uh, yeah. To be gravitated, uh, to surround them by the greens and blues and even the pinks and lighter purples, lilacs. So green is very helpful in that way. And yellow is a very uh, special color for a lot of mothers and babies. Uh, do you recommend using it? Yes, I mean, yellow is the color of the sun, right? But yellow is a color which, um, if it's too bright a color, it can overactivate them. Actually, a study was done and they found that too much yellow in a room tends to make the baby cry, cry too much. Okay, so it's overstimulated. Yes, yeah, so you don't want to have your whole room colored yellow or okay. like too much, like a bright, Just bright like yellow. Just like one wall or Yes, something. maybe a slightly, uh, you know, slightly uh, pastel or slightly lighter yellow. Okay is much more, is also soothing as well as stimulating for them. It's about balancing that a little bit. But this is a very interesting point to bring up because, you know, I'm sure, Gina, you've also experienced this as new mothers. Uh, because you put on a bit of weight, you'll end up wearing a lot of blacks because it's trimming. And that's not always the most uplifting color, right? Especially when you're repeating it day in and day out. Have you, have you thought about these things? Because frankly, to me, this is all new information and a lot of new learning. No, actually, I wish I knew all this so early earlier. Earlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, uh, it was more about comfort and all, but yes, I was wearing a lot of black and green, uh, I think, my post-pregnancy. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, I think after post-delivery, I was wearing more of yellows and greens again. Okay. So that also helped oh, and to lift up the mood. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. That's good. And did you know about the eco-friendly products, uh, you know, when you're painting your house, uh, the uh, harmful impact that paint can actually have? Had you thought about that, and especially the impact it has on little children? Uh, just lately, I think a lot of advertisements are about all this um, odorless uh, paintings and all that. When I was away, uh, yeah. the house got painted. Okay. So, you know, they... I think this is something we do, right? We keep the children away from the house yes, when it's getting yes. painted. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Because we can't bear it sometimes. Can you imagine yeah. them so vulnerable and tiny? Yes, sir. that's why these important uh, you know, terms like uh, VOC and all come in, right? Definitely. And what about... Uh, when they're playing and all of that, uh, anything you recommend uh, that, the kind of color schemes that can be used? Well, interesting you ask, Meghna, because from a professional um, level, I'm a play therapist and I deal with a lot of color. Children use a lot of color as a therapy tool. Yeah. So what colors that children use when they're coloring, drawing, painting, which at a young age, they like doing that a lot. Okay. Uh, it really is reflective of what they're going through. So, for example, I had a child who was using a lot of black. Now, using black every now and then is fine. Yeah. But when you find they're using a lot of the blacks and uh, browns, it, it gave me an indication of the kind of heavy, despondent feelings the child was going through. Okay. He would draw a lot of gray clouds and, you know, like a r dark black rain, which um, very much, and it became a theme in his coloring. So it was a, basically what we wear and what colors we like is a reflective, reflection of what we're feeling internally. Okay. So if you kind of take a quick look around us, mm -hmm. we have an idea of, and interestingly enough, when you're wearing the same color as someone, it shows about how emotionally aligned you are. Oh, okay. So couples yes. who dress uh, like each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or okay. parents who make their kids dress up in the same yes. outfits, right? Yes. Do you know you were discussing about this that, you know, um, women um, after they deliver, uh, especially when you had twins, uh, it's very common because we're cooped up in the, in the house, in our room, literally, I think for the first six months, I've, I've not ventured out as much. And it's a big shock to the system when you're literally contained in, you know, especially in Mumbai, our smaller homes. You're, you're sort of contained in these 200, 300 square feet rooms, uh, day in and day out. And it's very common for women to feel overwhelmed, uh, neglected, isolated more than anything else. Um, did you also go through something like that uh, when you had just delivered? Yes, yes. I had gone through a very bad postpartum for almost uh, five months. Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, I don't remember what did I do to come out of it. But uh, yeah, my husband was a great support then. And yeah, in the evenings, I used to take small walks on the terrace and stuff like that to just and watch TV thoda sa. Yeah, to and take then, your yeah. mind off. Uh, yeah. Because wait, there's a lot of pressure also, right? Yes. When yes. you're responsible for newborns. I don't have not come across this therapy. Um, so I'm sure if you know, it's a good way to make people aware. I know, definitely. Uh, Arya, can you enlighten us a little bit more? Like, if, you know, it's so common for women to suffer from postpartum depression after delivering, 
um, how does color, how does color psychology, color therapy, how does it all help a woman then cope with this? Uh, I think it can be very, very helpful because uh, like Jinal was saying, we are so overwhelmed. I mean, I had one child and you had two. So I can imagine doubly being overwhelmed, so much to think about. We don't often have the time and space to go figure out what I can do to help myself. Yeah. Uh, we don't even sometimes feel we have time to go outside and do basic things. Exactly. You know, even meeting a friend which would maybe otherwise cheer us up. We don't have that bandwidth after you've delivered and you're still learning the ropes as a first time mother especially. So I think colors are a much more simpler, easier way to kind of help en enhance our moods and uplift us uh, because postpartum depression is very common. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm very, very thankful for you, Jeno, for bringing it up because a lot of women don't uh, feel shy or hesitant to talk about it, but it's so rampant. It's so common. And color yeah. can really help us. Like I was saying, trying to wear the much more uh, warmer colors can help uplift our mood. You were saying orange was there, and I think yeah. the orange is a very sunnier, happy, chirpier color. So even if we're not feeling it, we can sometimes consciously make an effort to wear colors that uplift us. Okay. The more brighter, vibrant, and I don't want to assign you should wear this color that color, whatever helps you to feel uplifted, like the oranges, shades of the yellow, orange, red, pinks, magentas, bright purples. And then, you know, when you're cooped up in the room, even having these yes. same colors yes. painted on your walls, uh, I think would really help a mother's mood. Yes, I would also say, as Gina was saying, going outside, stepping outside into natural light is very, very important. Yeah. Seeing the sky, the blue sky, the green trees. The colors of the trees and the water and the wind really help uplift us because these the cooling blues and greens really calm us down. And of course, okay. we can be overstimulated, agitated, worried, irritable. Let's be honest, as new mothers, we can get very irritable. We don't have an outlet for it. We don't want to take it out on our children or our families, but what do we do with these feelings? Uh, so take it's them nice out on the to husband. have. That's what I'm <laughs> yes, depending how much they're willing to take is another question because they often can be equally overwhelmed. Yeah, they're very overwhelmed also. I personally also do that as well when I'm feeling. Um, uh, you know, when I'm also feeling stressed, I do find that color helps me a lot. It's helped me a lot in phases in my life where I didn't have the outlet or maybe you don't feel like talking about your problems yeah, exactly. with your friends or a therapist. Sometimes you just but for me, color you know, it the, out. The main point is we have to take very special care uh, for, for getting like these healthy home paints yes. uh, to help both the mother and the child, their development, right. their moods. Um, I think these are very, very pertinent topics and again, Nobody has brought them to our awareness. Till today, I honestly, this is the first time I'm hearing of it. And I had no idea that it is so impactful, that it has such a direct impact on both the mother and the child. Uh, so I'm glad we had this conversation. We've learned a lot. And uh, thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you for being so honest with sharing your experiences as a mother. Mm -hmm. And Arya, you're a star for bringing us uh, to this knowledge that we had no idea about, about the impact of colors. And I hope the mothers who are listening also are uh, going to take note that use colors that are free of chemicals. Uh, be very careful about uh, you know, what the direct impact of different colors will have on both the development and mood for yourself and for your child. It's very important how you choose color for the well-being of your family. So thank you so much for watching. Remember, of course, in the end, there's no right way or wrong way. There's only your way. So trust your way. Thank you so much for watching.